Hey guys, so for this video I just wanted to do a really quick tutorial on how you can simulate slew rate uh, since I know that that's something that's going to be important and something we maybe haven't talked about. So slew rate, there are two ways of sort of finding it out. You can use a closed form calculation, uh, which will get you kind of close, but it's not going to give you a 100% exact answer. And the best way in the way I'm going to be talking about today is actually going to be simulating it. So if you simulate slew rate, it'll actually use the transistor models themselves and give you a little bit more accurate solution. So you can see how something like an op amp will perform with the step input. So I'm going to start off with just this simple op amp test bench schematic. Uh, it's not we're not necessarily as concerned with what's inside of this op amp uh, since we're just going to be working at the test bench level to simulate slew rate. So for this, what we currently have is a VDC voltage source connected to the positive input and then a negative feedback, a unity gain buffer. So we have a, a unity gain feedback system going into our negative input. So this is going to be operating as a buffer. So what we need to simulate slew rate is that we want to see how the op amp responds to a step input. So we want to have it start off maybe at zero volts and then step up to VDD and we want to see how long it takes for that output to respond. So it's going to be maybe the speed of the op amp. You can think how quickly can it change its output. So if we take a look at our VDC voltage source, it doesn't have anything that we can use to get a step input. So we're just going to have to get rid of it. So for this first one, I'm just going to delete this VDC voltage source and we're going to replace it with a different type of source. So it's going to be from analog live, just like the other one. And the one we're looking for is V pulse. So we're going to be looking for V-Pulse, click away, that way it'll actually load up. And I'm just going to go ahead and set it down first, and then we'll talk about some of the properties. So if we press Q on this and look at some of the properties, what we'll see is we will see that it's got, it's got a lot of different stuff on it that we can talk about. So we still have our DC voltage, so if I put this back at uh, VDC or something like that, uh, we can still use it for a DC voltage simulation. If it's a DC simulation, it'll only use this voltage. Same thing for AC. If we wanted to do an AC simulation, we could set an AC magnitude, and that's all fine and good. But what happens is that we now have these additional parameters down here that it'll let us tune and tweak for us to actually see what happens here. So voltage one, that's going to be our sort of off voltage. You can think of it that way. So I'm going to leave that as zero volts. And voltage two, that's going to be our on voltage. We want to set that to VDD. Now, period is going to be the time it takes to complete one cycle of this. So it's going to continue pulsing, and the pulse period we're going to have to define here. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and set my period to be 0.2 microseconds, and it should correct it to 200 nanoseconds. Now, delay time. So delay time is going to be the time it takes for it to start the first initial pulse. So the time it's going to stay low before it starts your first pulse, and then it'll go back down. So for the delay time, let's make it 100 nanoseconds. Rise time, fall time, we're just going to leave these blank, let it default to whatever it needs to. If you were really trying to tweak, you could change these if you wanted to. And then pulse width, I'm just going to go ahead and define it. Uh, if we don't define it, it should, it should default to just half of our period, but I'm going to go ahead and define it to be 100 nanoseconds, just to make sure it knows we're all on the same page. We can hit apply, OK. Let's save and check our schematic to make sure there aren't any errors. OK, so now we didn't get any errors. Let's move on. Well, let's go ahead and start with just a simple simulation first. So if we click Run on here, I've got my ADEL window up and running. We should be able to see the output from the DC simulation. Oh, looks like we terminated with an error. Looks like maybe I got one of the parameters wrong. Maybe it wasn't supposed to be VDC. Let's check, take a look and see. Yep, that was it. We weren't supposed to use VDC here. We were supposed to use VN. So I'm going to go back and change that. Let's change this to be VN. Save and check one more time. And now let's try and run. Let's just do a DC simulation first. And we'll get rid of this extra one that we don't need. So let's right click on it. Just hit delete. Now let's run it again. So now it looks like we've got our updated output again. So you can see that DC voltage is still there, so we can still use this for our DC simulation and for AC simulations. Now, for slew rate, that's going to be whenever this trans or whenever this op amp is dynamically changing. So DC is not going to work. Stability is not necessarily going to work because we're not going to be able to determine 
um, how this changes. We're not going to be able to actually see it happen. AC, XF, all of those aren't going to work because those kind of linear linearize the model and then assumes, assume things we don't want it to assume. So we're going to have to use a new analysis. And the analysis we're going to be using is the transient analysis. So make sure you're using Spectre, make sure you have the model libraries all loaded, and we're going to be using transient analysis. Now, for this stop time, let's just go ahead, we set our period to be 200 nanoseconds. Let's let it go for uh, two periods. So we'll do 400 nanoseconds for our stop time. Uh, we're not going to click any of these. This is just a little bit of extra information. We don't really care about it as much. We're just going to hit OK. OK. Oh, DC, variable name. Did we put something? We might have put something wrong. Let's try 0.4 view. DC variable name string does not represent a design variable. Interesting. Maybe we have something, something, something set somewhere. Let's try and cancel this. We'll just disable all of our analysis and we'll start over one more time. There we go. Okay. So let's go ahead and try running it. We'll go ahead and enable our DC simulation as well. And it looks like looks like it was successful. So we've got our DC simulation. Now we haven't told it what we want to plot yet, so it hasn't plotted anything. So let's go to results, direct plot, and main form. And now once this pops up, it's going to be asking us if we want, uh, we're going to choose our analysis. So for this one, we want transient. That's the only one that we have. But if you have multiple, you want to select transient. We're going to be looking at voltage and we're going to be selecting a net. Now we're going to go ahead and add these to the output. Back on our schematic, we're going to select our net. Let's go ahead and take a look at the input. Let's see what the input looks like and see if that's what we expect. So our input, we can see it starts off at zero volts and then it pulses up to VDD and then it pulses back down and pulses back up. So this is looking kind of like what we expect. Now let's select our output. So if we select our output net, we can see that our output net does not look quite the same as our input net, right? So maybe this one's running a little bit too fast. Maybe we want to... Uh, make sure we can see this linearization so maybe we might want to extend this pulse time a little bit but this kind of gives us a hint of what's going on so we can see our input is pulsing up almost immediately right it's very 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 quick but our output is not that quick remember it's got we've got capacitors and things like that in here so that's going to take some time to charge and that's what we're seeing here we're seeing this taking its time to charge now, before we actually measure this, let's go ahead and extend the time just a little bit to maybe make sure that we can <clears throat> make sure that we can actually see all these features. Even though it looks like we can see enough, we might want to extend the time just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go back to our schematic. Let's change our pulse, and we're going to change the period. Let's just go ahead and change it to 400. Delay time, we'll keep that. Oh, let's make it 200. Okay, apply there. And now on our simulation, we're going to change. Oh, we'll just leave it. So now we'll only see a single pulse. We'll leave this at 400, rerun it. We might need to save and check again. That's a good point. So now let's rerun. And now we should actually see those transient plots on the output. Yes, so now we can. So now we can definitely see that after some period of time, it does eventually reach this peak, right? Now, there are some oscillations that kind of ring out. There's some oscillations down here as well. But after a time, it does reach this peak. It's not going to reach exactly 3.3 volts because there needs to be some sort of headroom. But it does get pretty close. It gets to 3.22 volts. So what we're concerned about for the slew rate is this linear section here. So we're concerned about this linear section. So for us to calculate it, what we're going to do is we're going to add markers. So we're going to add markers, and the reason we're going to add markers is because it tells us the time and the voltage at that time. Okay, so I want to make sure we keep it linear, because down here you can see it kind of starts to oscillate a little bit, so it might be a little bit tougher. I'm going to select regions that are somewhat linear, okay? So you've got these two regions that are somewhat linear. And we're going to try and calculate our slew rate in terms of volts per microsecond. Now, if we just take a look at the units, we can see that we have, oops, make this full screen. We can see that we have nanoseconds here on the bottom. So this is going to be our time. And then we have volts over here on the top. So if we're talking about volts per microsecond, that's just the slope of this line. And hopefully we all know how to calculate the slope of a line. It's just rise over run. So our rise, I'm going to use my phone calculator here. Our rise is going to be 2.89 minus 
0 0.90. Okay, so our rise is going to be 1.99 volts. So it's risen 1.99 volts in this time. And now we need to look at our run. So that's the amount that it's changed. I'm going to go ahead and write that down. 1.99 volts just to make sure I've got it here with me. Now, for this horizontal axis, we need to measure the difference between these two times. So if we do 258.5 nanoseconds minus 222.1, that's going to be 36.4, okay? So 36.4 nanoseconds, okay? Make sure we keep this in nanoseconds. So if we're going to try and calculate the slew rate in volts per microsecond, we need to know the volts divided by microseconds. So volt is 1.99. Right now we have our time in nanoseconds. Remember it's 36.4, but it's pretty easy to convert from nanoseconds to microseconds. So in this case, it'll be 0 0.0364 microseconds. Now all we have to do is just do 1.99 divided by 0 0.0364 microseconds. And that gives us a slew rate. So our SR is equal to 54.67 volts per microsecond. And what slew rate is trying to tell you is that is the maximum amount of output swing you can have. So if you're going to have a step input like this, your output can't just immediately follow it. It's going to have to follow this slew rate. It's kind of like the speed limit. It's not ever going to be able to exceed this limit right here. And it's set by a lot of different factors, but this is going to give you kind of a good indication of the speed of your op amp. So for example, if you have a really high frequency, fast changing signal, your op amp might not be able to keep up with this. So it's just going to kind of wiggle around here. But for example, if you have a lower signal, then it's going to have more time to sort of follow it along, right? So that's just a real quick tutorial on how to calculate slew rate. And uh, just to show you too, if you, for example, have a much faster simulation, if I close this and we change some of our design variables here, we change some of our design variables to where maybe now this is not 400 nanoseconds, but let's just make it 10 microseconds for our period, five microseconds delay time, and then five microsecond pulse width. If we use this one and then we change our simulation as well to be, let's do 20 microseconds. Uh oh, looks like we need to unenable this for some reason and then hit OK. Okay, so now it's going to do our DC simulation and then our transient simulation. We probably need to save and check again. Now, if we run it one more time. What we should see now is that we should see that kind of line disappear. Now that line hasn't just disappeared. That linear line hasn't just disappeared. That uh, sort of linear slope that we saw at the input and, or at the uh, rising edge of our pulse. It hasn't disappeared. We're just having a little bit more trouble seeing it now because we're so far zoomed out that that uh, 54 volts per microsecond looks almost like it's just a regular old pulse, right? Because it's so fast. But if we use these little bars here at the top, you can see there's this little gray rectangle with the two lines on either side. If we grab those two lines, that actually allows us to change our axis limits a little bit. So I'm going to move one a little bit closer to the rising edge, and I'm going to move another a little bit closer over here as well. Now what we can see is that we now have this little bit of ringing garbage here again, but if we were really, really motivated, we could calculate the slew rate maybe from this little bit of line right here. Or maybe if we shift over here to this other side, we could calculate our slew rate from this linear section here. Okay, so we can actually use this to our advantage. We can use this to shift over and look at the different design variables that we have here. Now what we can also tell is that our rise time for our input pulse has changed a little bit. So at 15 microseconds, we're at zero volts. And then by the time we get to 15.05, 15 we're already at 3.3 volts. So this has changed our rise time from, uh, from something that looked like it was very small on the order of nanoseconds to 50 nanoseconds. So that's definitely an increase in rise time, something you're gonna wanna try and try and deal with whenever you're doing this. But this, like I said, this is just a quick tutorial showing you how you can use the transient simulations, how you can set those up, and then how you can use those to eventually calculate slew rates, since that's something that you're going to need for the final project. So if you guys have questions, just leave them down in the comment section below or send me an email. Other than that, thank you guys for watching.